Hardcore Nuzlocks are becoming quite popular on YouTube, but most of it is just people hardcore nuzlocking the base vanilla games. It's time to show these people how it's done, with probably one of the craziest nuzlock challenges you will ever see on YouTube. I'm going to be doing a hardcore plus nuzlock in Fire Red Omega, which is basically Fire Red but way harder for those two people who don't already know. This is a standard hardcore nuzlock, but with three extra big changes on top of it, that's why I've got to be plus at the end. First of all, edging to level cap is not allowed. And also, about level caps, I will now be level capping for every single boss battle, which includes all the rival battles and Giovanni battles, and not just the gym leaders. To be honest, that does make things harder, but edging is quite tedious in my opinion anyway, so it's more convenient if anything, but it's still harder. Next rule, all conventional setup moves have been banned, so no Dragon Dance, no Sword Dance, no Calmind or Bulk Up or any of that crazy jank. The only exception would be like really weird jank like Metal Claw which has a 10% chance to boost your attack or like Ancient Power because those strategies they're just not that viable anyway so yeah that's, it's not broken or anything. But no more broken setup strategies are allowed. But the last and final change, and this is by far the biggest change that impacts the difficulty, is that in this challenge of Hardcore Plus, all EVs are now removed from the game. You just can't gain them at all. And most of you just have no idea how crazy disabling EV gains actually is, and just how much harder it makes any Pokemon game. Good lord. Without EVs, you're going to be pretty underpowered compared to the opponents, as they're going to have max IVs and you're going to have completely random IVs in nature and you're not going to have any EVs to make up for it. You really do have to rely on your brain and your strategy to win. You can no longer just do what you do in the main games, which is like, get some good EVs, a good mon, and just muzzle your way through everything. You need to really know what you're doing. So that's pretty much Hardcore Plus. But wait, on top of this, I'm going even further beyond. That's right. One extra small little rule I'm doing, on top of all of this, as if it wasn't enough as it is. One death equals reset. Yes, you heard me. If I lose a single mon in this Nuzlocke, I have to reset the whole run. So the entire run has to be flawless. Good lord. This makes Nuzlocke and base emerald a complete walk in the park, a complete meme. I know this challenge sounds totally insane and only an individual with a godlike cranium would, could possibly achieve. But just so you know, this guy on Twitch called DRXX has already done this. In Renegade Platinum, nobody's done it in Fire Red Omega yet, so you can go check out that guy if you want to see in Renegade Platinum. But for Fire Red Omega, how easy is this? Is it doable? And will I complete this monstrous challenge? So I started Deathlock, and this time I pick Maccabees my starter, for one particular reason that you'll see at the very end. Also, people like to call it Shitmar, and I gotta prove those haters wrong. Make sure that you reset for a Maccabee with really good special attack, ideally like max special attack with a modest nature. Optimizing your starter in this run is very important. Now I will say that for the first actual rival battle, not the level 5 one, the one that you fight afterwards at level 9, that can be pretty RNG reliant. As long as you have okay encounters and you don't get too unlucky, you can usually be that L kid, but you might have to reset a few times to it. Now, what you have to do is you have to prepare for the first gym leader Brock, and that's a potential hurdle for some people. His team does have a lot of dumb RNG in it, and it could be a pain, but it's usually very manageable. I delete the rival route to fish instead of going for grass, so make sure that you don't encounter anything in the grass so you can fish instead to get worked out, which could be pretty useful. Then pick up the Gif, Trico and Mudkip as their encounters in their respective routes. They're really important, but the Mudkip is incredibly important to your run. That's going to be pretty pivotal to the run and it is Elite Four worthy, so that's very important. Make sure ideally that you get a good Mudkip. So I reach Brock with a team exactly level 14. You really want to encounter at least one other grass type, apart from Trico like Oddish or Bellsprout. That should make Brock easy enough. Trico is a good lead to beat his first two mons, Geodude and Rhyhorn. You want the Trico to gain a level ideally during the battle so you can then handle the Onyx afterwards easily enough as 
Onyx could potentially outspeed you, and that thing is really obnoxious, as it likes to spam Swagger and Dragon Breath to Parafuse, and I do not like that. Also, like, yes, you can gain levels mid-battle. Even though there's no edging, you just have to enter the battle at exactly level, level 14, but at this point, you can still gain a level mid-battle, and yeah, gaining a level, later on, it's not necessary. At this point, it does make it quite a bit easier, because one level doesn't sound like a lot, but one, it's kind of one level at this point, it's like 1 14th, so proportionally, it's actually a pretty decent upgrade, and it can make a difference. The Vault Picks next can be pretty annoying, but I bring Maccabi to specifically deal with that, as that's got Flash Fire, so yeah, that's pretty nice. At least Maccabi could do something in this battle. Then, as long as you have a grass type that can deal with two fossils, then land one or two good quad super effective hits on the Onyx, you pretty much win. Be sure to abuse the fact that the AI will never use Rock Tomb if you're slower than the AI because of how it works. It's really weird speed control programming. It's pretty dumb, but good for you as you can abuse it. More often than not, with a good start, you will win this battle. So far, so good. Now, the level cap is set for Nugget Bridge Rival. That battle is very easy if you just use Magby for everything, then be the rival's elkid with the Marsh Stomp. If you do that, you just auto win, so no point in really showing that. Anyone could do that easily. Let's just skip to the next gym, and this one is very pesky. Misty takes Brock's RNG abuse to the next level, and her team can be hard. Luckily, you get a lot of encounters to handle her with. Over time, I got beating Misty into fine art flawlessly. As for guaranteed encounters you can get to help you, definitely get the bay leaf in the tunnel. Then, because bulky grass is super important for countering her. Also, guaranteed Gyarados and Melotic before this gym is huge. Then, because of dupe claws, you have a very good chance of encountering a wild oddish due to dupe claws, which can be very good as you can get Blossom, which is so nice, or even at the very least a Bell Sprite, which is still pretty good. These encounters will give you a great chance against Misty if you use them properly. However, this time, something crazy happened. I did a completely different strategy in this run. I got a Routes after Nugget Bridge and I traded it to an NPC for the Lickitung which held TM Thunderbolt. And I gave that TM Thunderbolt to my lead Pokemon, Gyarados. Yes, you are unironically seeing a special attacking Gyarados being used. <sighs> just goes to show that your memes can be more than just dreams. Special Gyarados. It literally auto beats at least half of Misty's team, which is pretty awesome. Stormy is the main threat, and the only semi-reliable way I found to beat it is to use a bulky grass type. Bayleaf can usually beat it with Poison Powder, Synthesis, and Magical Leaf, but definitely be ready for dumb luck. After that, the battle should pretty much be over. Misty is seen as the hardest gym leader, but with the right mons and matchups, you easily win. Keep in mind that Gyarados doesn't even need TM Thunderbolt, even Secret Power, it can still put in a lot of work and wreck some of their mons like Love Disc and Psyduck. So, on to Gym 3. I'll once again skip the next rival battle, as that's not really a big threat. Lieutenant Surge, though, is one of the easier, but one of the harder gym leaders at the same time. He seems to have a lot of variance in the battle. Marsh Stomp is super important, obviously, due to siphoning, but the Sand Slash that I caught is really potent as TM Dig is now buffed to ATP's power, so that is really strong. So onto the battle. Surge's Chinchow is pretty obnoxious, as it's got surprisingly decent speed and it just loves to get that juicy power fusion, you'd love to see it. That took way more effort to beat it than it should have, come on. One of the biggest threats in Minetric one of the biggest threats this team is Minetric, but the way I dealt with that was I had my grass type out, so I knew that it would obviously go for Flame for it, because why wouldn't it on my grass type? So I switched into Magmar, or should I say Pogmar, as it's got Flash Fire, so it's now strong as all hell. Man, all these people calling it Shitmar, you get up out. With Pogmar Flash Fire, you can easily destroy the Minetric. Then Raichu comes out, and that's another pretty big threat, potentially, but there are ways that you can just meme on it. What I did was, I switched into my Gyarados, of all things, which I brought to this gym, and yes, bringing Gyarados to the le le electric type gym is legit strat, as it will never, as Raichu will never use an electric type move against Magmar or Grass type when it has Surf and Focus Punch respectively, 
Gyarados can always just switch in on Focus Punch and Surf and attack those moves. Then you it baits out in the electric type move, so your grass type can easily can just switch in on that. Or Marsh Stomp, which I do in this case. Ideally, keep attacking the Raichu so it can't use Focus Punch, but damn it, I did miss my Mud Shot. I was used to in Emerald Kaizo how Mud Shot was 100% accuracy, but I guess here, now Mud Shot can miss, which is a bit annoying, but oh well, it happens sometimes. But with the Gyarados Pivot strategy, Raichu will almost always just get memed on. Completely countered. Even Bayleaf does a job really well, as it can tank Electric moves and Surf. The final threat is Magneton, but just at that point gang up on it and beat it. Pivot around it if need be. I skipped the next notable battle after that, Erika, which is reasonably easy to do, as long as you team build for it properly. Make sure that you have chest of berries as otherwise, you're just dice rolling for sleep packs, but there's an easy process. Lead off with Magmar and get a free KO against the leading grass type, why not? Then Ludicolo is in next, which can be a pain, but that can be countered reasonably well with a bulky grass type. Meganium could work for this. Then bring the guaranteed Hitmonchan, or you could even use Hitmonlee for the Blissey and just wreck it with a fighting type move, obviously. Then for Blossom, which only has Leaf Blade as its only attacking move, anything that resists grass four times like Butterfree or Crobat can just trivialize that, so that's easy. Jump Pluff does nothing, so who cares then. Veilplume is the only real threat on the team. With Chesto Berry though, you should be fine. So once Veilplume goes down, the battle's pretty much over. Now, I didn't record the first Giovanni battle, but with this one death equals reset rule set, it is a total run ender. The threats are Kangaskhan and Persian. They're really rough. Not only is Double Edge incredibly strong, but also for some reason in this battle, the AI is not programmed properly and it is random. So because of that randomness, it's very hard to pivot around. The AI just literally clicks random buttons on her mons. Even things like Gyarados can get one shot by a critical hit Double Edge, which is no joke. The rest of Giovanni's team, apart from those two mons, are kind of a joke though, so at least that's good. What I did do to at least make this battle easier was I did get the almost guaranteed Pupitar, which you can get in the in-game trade. That is really good for this battle, especially because it can get TM Brick Break, which is really nice. I also use my Sand Slash, which is plus defense nature, so that's really what you want to see. There will be some luck, so try to come up with a plan for those two threats. The rest of them should go down easily enough. But assuming you don't get too unlucky and you do have some good mons to counter the two normal types, you should be able to win the battle, but you might get unlucky. So, that aside, before the next gym battle, there are two rival battles, but to be honest, I won't cover them. Just make sure that you can handle the lead Golbat and Crobat, and then bring Swampert for the Ace Select the Buzz. That's pretty much half the battle figured out right there, so I assume that you're intelligent enough to figure out the rest yourself. Koga, on the other hand, is not so simple. He's a definite run ender and needs some precise strategies, otherwise, it's a total dice roll. Luckily, I've got this figured out. The good news is that you get a bold of encounters by this point. One of which is near guaranteed and by far one of, if not, the most important encounters in the whole game, Stormy. This is so pivotal to the run, non-negotiable, is at the very least top 3 encounters of the run, prob most likely top 2, which is probably the top 1 actually, yeah. With Stormy, Koga becomes significantly easier, and Stormy, it just gets better as the game progresses. It's capable of one-shotting Weezing and Venomoth. Great start. Crobat is definitely the biggest threat on his team. It outspeeds virtually everything, has Confuse Rate and great coverage. Hard to reliably counter. I did have a strat though. I used Nose Pass to tank a Sludge Bomb. No, sort of. It did get hit by a crit, which you'd love to see, but at least I was still able to paralyze it. That's what mattered. Now that Crobat's powered, it can safely be taken down. Tentacruel just gets memed on by Snorlax. Snorlax is another one of those top 3 encounters in the whole game, good lord. For Fortress afterwards, on Koga's team, I used... Special Gyarados. Yes. Just do it. Do it. Special Gyarados is real, damn it. And it works. The final mon in Koga's team is Electrode, but as that's the final mon in his team, it cannot blow up, so just 
Swamp it with Swamper and you win. Yeah, good good job. Now, Giovanni Battle at Silphco, which I did not record because that battle was kind of a meme. Just lead off with Stormy and just win. It one shots everything apart from Persian, so just bring something to handle the Persian, which should be fine at that point with Chesto Berry. And you should be able to win just fine. Now, the annoying thing is that I forgot to record my Sabrina battle. I forgot to record it and Twitch it only stores your streams for like your last 16 videos so I no longer have access to that stream which is kind of annoying and I forgot to record it when I had the chance so I don't have the footage for that battle. But I will say that she is probably one of the top 3 hardest gym leaders in this game with huge threats on her team especially Jinx. She can be really rough and there are a lot of variants in that battle but I had ways to beat her. Her whole team is special attacking, so just prepare for that. Snorlax is an absolutely obvious choice. Anyone with two brain cells can figure that out themselves. No need to explain why. And Houndoom, obviously. It does counter Jinx and Gengar also because they can't hit it for neutral damage, which is... I was actually quite surprised. But yeah, especially the Gengar, it only has Ice Punch and Psychic. But a very important mon for this lock overall is Scizor from the game corner, very important mod for this gym leader and the Nuzlocke as a whole. Scizor is really good, elite 4 worthy and has great typing. Definitely buy that cipher and get that as your Celadon encounter. For these mods you can beat Sabrina though I remember having to risk probably 1 or 2 crits because I misplayed and the AI did some weird baton pass shenanigans. There can definitely be some weird jank plays in this fight with Sabrina. I could totally understand if you get unlucky and you wipe to this battle and you have to restart, but yeah, that, that could happen. Well, at the very least, after that battle, I did record the rest of the run, so yeah. Blaine is probably the easiest gym leader with a very specific, guaranteeable mon. Kingdra. Give this thing rain dance, set up the rain, swift swim, surf, sweep, everything. Apart from the last two mons, because your rain will run out by that point, you can easily just win anyways, you can even just pivot around to get your rain back up to just destroy anyways. Yeah, easy. One more gym to go. You get to clear out the islands before Giovanni, but almost all the encounters you get there are really pointless. Except one, slack off at island free and oh baby that is the nuts. But after that, the final gym is upon us and this one does require a plan. The Tyranitar on his team is really difficult to safely counter and the Swamper is potentially crazy. The Swamper has Hydro Cannon, which is a ludicrous 170 base power in this game, with a 40% freeze chance, but it only has 45% accuracy. Same with Hyper Beam roughly, and it to balance out the fact that it doesn't recharge, it only has like 45% accuracy, but it's strong as hell. Also, because another thing that makes this even harder is because the next rival battle is level 61, I had to lower my level cap to level 60 to accommodate that, even though this gym leader has a level 63. That's how you know I'm a pro Nuzlocker, when I personally reduce my level cap by 3, I had to remove edging, lel. Okay, so in this battle, Stormy is still the sauce. Persian needs to be resisted, ideally to be safely taken out, but Tyranitar was really scary. Definitely a clench right here because it's got Dragon Dance, good god, and it's 3 levels higher than you. But once Tyranitar goes down, the battle is pretty much over. Just use Sceptile with an anti freeze berry to counter the Swampert and you win. My Sceptile actually has like the worst possible special attack, but yeah, it's still one shots anyways. With that done, it's time to end this run once and for all. The champion awaits us at the Pokemon League. I'll need to prepare, but I already have the Pokemon League pretty much figured out. Most of it should be easy, but to raise the stakes even higher, to close off this challenge, I will be using dynamic level caps for the Pokemon League, which I have never seen any other Nuzlocke do. Basically, I'll be changing the level cap for each member as I do them, so I cannot over level in the Pokemon League at all. So instead of just making it so you cap for the Elite Ford's highest mon from the get go, I will make it so. I start the battle, I start the Elite Four with Lorelei at her level cap. Then once I go to Bruno, I use Rare Candy to get my mons up to his level cap. 
then I go to Agatha and get up to her level cap. Then what I do to make this even harder is I go to Lance at one level below his ace, then after I beat Lance I rare candy myself up to his level exactly. So I'm actually putting myself at a one level disadvantage for Lance and a three level disadvantage for the champion. So talk about handicapping myself. This actually makes Elite Four a lot more interesting as it kind of level scales all the fights because otherwise the first two fights would just be a meme because you'd have such a big level advantage against them. But yeah, this definitely makes it harder than normal. The first two Elite Four member, you have to actually use your brain a little bit more than usual. But yeah. With that done, I've got my team pretty much assembled. And this team in this rule set is pretty much standard. Like me and a lot of people, like a lot of my fans actually kind of like figured this out already. The best thing about this team here is that everything here except from slacking is 100% guaranteed encounter. And even slacking... There are ways in which you can manipulate it by doing encounters in certain orders to make it so you have a very good chance of encountering slacking in Island 3. So that's really nice. So let me give you a quick rundown of the team. Stormy, the first Mon, it's pretty much the start of the show. It's probably the most important Pokemon in the Pokemon League. It does extremely well against the whole Elite Four. It's not that useful against the Champion, but good god it will carry you for the Elite Four members. Surf, Psychic, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam is just incredible coverage. It, it wrecks all of them up. It really does. Next Mon is Snorlax. It's such a good special wall. It can use Yawn, Protect, Slack Off. It's so good. It tanks pretty much every special attacker in the Pokemon League. So that's really good. It handles like Alkazam, Houndoom, like Every special attacker basically. Lorelai's Lapras actually. Lorelai's Lapras has very few counters, so apart from Snorlax, so that's really useful for that. Yeah, very important mon. Next mon is you don't need this, but slacking. You can't deny the power in slacking. This thing, you don't need this. It's more just like like a backup mon. Just to cover our weaknesses, just an emergency one hit kill button, just Whenever you're in trouble, or you need something to take a hit, or you need something to just come in and smash something hard, you just send us in. Really reliable mon, really good. I love using slacking, it's, it's so fun to use. Just switch in, smack something, switch out, take hits really well. The next mon is Swamper in this. It's not too useful against Elite Four. It does have a very particular use against a champion for countering a very specific mon. The rivals elect the buzz, which is the ace mon of the Pokemon League. But um, it is pretty useful against Bruno, and it can maybe handle one or two of Lance's mons, but that's pretty much the extent of its uses. It's there just to cover its weak our weaknesses, to make sure we can handle like those one or two pesky mons that we would otherwise have trouble with, like Electabuzz. But yeah, the next mon is the Guaranteed Scizor, and this is also like, it's not the most broken thing ever, but it is really good, but it's more for very certain specific matchups. Is there specifically for the rival's Sceptile, but also just um, it's a pretty solid mon in general. This one is probably one of the less used mons on our team, but it's still pretty nice. It can counter one or two things in Champion's team. With this team, you will destroy the Champion really easily, you will see. So that's pretty much the team here. With this team, you should be fine more often than not against Elite Four. So yeah, with that done, Let's go and challenge Elite Four. So first up is Lorelai. So Lorelai's here first and what's really interesting is yes, we are now at her level, level 63. Which is kind of interesting entering the Pokemon League and you're like instantly at their level. Because usually like you're going to be over leveled from the first few ones, but yeah. With Stormy, Lorelai is kind of a meme. Stormy with Recover in Thunderbolt trivializes most of her team. Apart from Lapras, that thing is Thunderbolt, so it's the Lapras is the only thing that can remotely give us trouble, so use Snorlax for that. Then you basically just win. You destroy everything else easily. And there's really nothing more to that. You just win. It's just easy. So that's that. Now, after Lorelei, we're on to Bruno, and we now raise the level cap to level 65. Now, I remove Recover, and I bring a spare TM to teach it instead, because 
I recover I thought was only useful for Lor Lorelei. You don't really need it for the other ones. But yeah, now that we're here, Bruno, we start off and Stormy. This thing's just yeah, this thing's the best encounter for a very good reason. Like, it destroys his first three mons with Surf because Bruno isn't very good at like switch AI type matchup. Then he only has like three fighting types left in his team, and you just destroy them. Like Machamp gets two shot by Psychic, and I was able to critical hit Earthquake regardless. Then um, yeah, you just destroy the rest. Polarath, I kept recover for this battle, then after this battle I took off recover, but for this battle, because I didn't really need Ice Beam, I just used recover, and Polarath just cannot touch Star Meat. It's pretty funny, then Hitmontop also does absolutely nothing. So, that is really easy. Agatha's next, and this one is okay, she can be a little bit pesky, but... Definitely make sure you lead off with something that can beat the Shedinja and Crobat, that thing is really annoying and something that I don't have a great counter to. I did actually take an unnecessary risk. I thought the Crobat would ideally go for Hypnosis, so I had Chestle Berry for it, but it went for Sludge Bomb. It did poison me though. Had it poisoned me and got crit, I think that might have been enough to finish off my Magmar. I think it might have. I don't know if it would have lived the poison damage in addition to crit. But luckily, it didn't get crit and poison, though the probability of that is really low, and thank god I managed to beat the Crobat anyways. You do not want your challenge to end here, of all places, because of like a dumb crit. So yeah, Magmar has definitely done its job. Then Sableye, that thing just gets wrecked by Scizor, it's not that thing is surprisingly easy to beat. Gengar, what I do is I pivot into Stormy and one-shot it. A good way that I deal with the Gengar is that I predict Thunderbolts, because I thought it might have Thunderbolts, so I go to Swampert, then it can't use Thunderbolt at that point, so it has to go for something else. So that allows me to just safely switch into Darmy, then just nuke the Gengar with the badge boost, you can just outspeed it. Mischievous was here, and I was pretty scared of this, as I know this thing could do like Destiny Bond, Mean Look, Perish Song, and stupid stuff like this, so I took a risk and just stayed in with Darmy, and thankfully I was able to, able to two shot it. Now, this is probably the this is actually no definitely the hardest mod on the Agatha's team, the Hypno. This thing I really don't like. Because it has Calm Mind and Leftovers and you just do not want to deal with this. If this thing sets up, especially with its really high special defense, it could just wreck you. Thankfully, Slacking was able to deal with this, but if it did not one-shot Hypno, I might have been in trouble. So thank God for that. Now, the final Elite Four member, and this time I'm actually one level below where most people set the level cap at. So yeah. Stormy is super pivotal for this battle. Ice Beam just goes off completely. It wrecks the first two mons. You can actually take advantage of the bad AI and the Dragonite, because it tries to use substitutes, but even if you don't one-shot it, you just take advantage of it. Now, this is where things start to go wrong. The Gyarados paralyzed my Stormy, so I had to switch out, and that was pretty rough. I had to switch out, so it kind of just ruined my momentum, and yeah, my Stormy ends up having to take damage, which you do not want, because Stormy is definitely going to be dead to any crit at this point, and you don't want that. Now, Aerodactyl, that thing is a humongous threat, because it's choice banded. And it outspeeds everything on my team, so you need to be extremely careful. I did have a plan to deal with it, so what I did was, I knew that because this team is most, it's pretty much all physical, I don't need Snorlax for this battle, so I kept Snorlax in reserve just to switch in on this, so I can scout out what move Aerodactyl goes for. I know for, for a fact that I can take Critical Hit Double Edge no matter what. So regardless of what Aerodactyl does, Snorlax can always take the hit. So it can go for either Earthquake, Rock Slide, or Double Edge. And depending on what move the Aerodactyl goes for, I can just counter it accordingly. So if it goes for Double Edge, I can just go into Scizor. If it goes for Rock Slide, I can just go into Swampert and just beat it that way. It shouldn't ever go for Earthquake. But yeah, it goes for Double Edge, so just Scizor can just destroy it at that point. Now, this is where the battle really started to go out of control. 
Charizard, and I think I I most certainly misplayed in this battle, but this Charizard is really really threatening because it has Substitute and Belly Drum, so you don't want to fuck around and just you don't want to mess around and let this thing set up. You really don't. So I switched out into Swampert, and this just started to go wrong. Charizard has Blast Burn, and Blast Burn it also has 170 base power, does not require recharge, has like 40% burn chance, but it only has like I think 50% accuracy, but it still hits quite a lot, and I just don't have a good answer for this, and I could not risk my Stormy. Stormy was going to die to crit, and yeah, like I was just not playing around, just my Magmar actually would have died to crit here. This was going so wrong, I had no guaranteed counter for that Charizard, which is really rough, and of course I could have one shot at this Charizard, but no, it had to hit the Blast Burn and get the burn, because of course it does. And this is looking so grim, it really is, but at least at this point, I know it can't use Belly Drum or Substitute, so Snorlax can just hold on. I think at this point it's pretty much stalled out of Blast Burn, so I can just use Yawn, then beat the Charizard, but man that was close, that was very close. I had to dodge I think two critical hits in this battle, which isn't that bad as far as one death equals reset challenges go, but you really don't want to be risking this at all, especially when you're this close to the end, we're so close. But with Charizard down, it's Stormy against the final Mon of the Elite Four, Dragonite. And this was a serious butt clench right here. Because Stormy, it's not guaranteed to one shot. I think Ice Beam was a 50% chance to one shot the Dragonite at this level. Which is definitely not what you want to see. And nothing can really reliably switch in on this. And I think Stormy is most certainly dead, especially to a crit. So I just had to risk that 50% chance, but you do need to consider that there's also a 10% chance to crit. I mean, 10% chance to burn, but a 6.2% chance to get critical hit. So the odds are in my favor that I can one-shot this Dragonite, and I get a crit. Good. Oh, that this was like doing this on stream was seriously, seriously rough. It was so tense. It really was. But thank god that battle worked out. That really could have gone wrong. But I do feel like I locked out. But at the same time, I feel like I misplayed. I could have, like, leveraged Flash Fire. I think what I should have done was I should have leveraged Flash Fire on the Magmar to stall out the Charizard from uh, Blast Burn. But yeah, like, the Charizard, I did get some bad RNG against it, anyways. But yeah, I got pretty lucky there. But, anyways, one more battle to go. So this is it. This is the final battle. Can I complete the one death equals reset a hardcore plus nuzzle of Pokemon Fire Red Omega? Let's find out. The champion is usually the hardest battle in the whole game. But this time he's a complete meme, Lel. So remember when I said that I chose Magmar or Pogmar for a very very specific reason? This is that reason, because if you line it up against a champion's team, Magmar actually destroy it almost single-handedly destroys five of the champion's six mons. And no, I'm not joking. So leads up with Heracross with modest nature and these very specific IVs with charcoal. You always one-shot it. Next will always be Metagross. That thing can explode, but you will always one-shot that as well. Now, next in is Walrin. Now, you might think, why this gets sent in now? That is because if you look at the docks, if you notice something, you'll notice how this Walrin, it doesn't actually have any water moves. No, it only has Ice Beam. So, yeah, that's pretty much free. So, you'll destroy that as well easily. Now, this did go a little bit weird because for some reason this can happen, though it's very unlikely. The rival actually switched out into his Electabuzz, disrupting Magmar's kill streak. 
but that literally makes absolutely no difference because we send in our designated electables counter, Swampert, and with leftovers in Protect, Electabuzz just cannot touch this thing at all. It does have counter though, so make sure you use Surf, then Earthquake to always KO it. You do not want to get countered at this point of the game. That would be such an embarrassing way to lose. But yeah. Take out the ace, the battle is really over that point. Septile comes in, bring her guaranteed counter for that, Scizor. And the final mount is Houndoom, and Magmar also destroys the Houndoom as well because it switches in on any fire move with Flash Fire, and then you just two shot it with Brick Break. So, yeah, did you notice that Magmar actually destroys everything apart from Electabuzz? That is Pokemon if I've ever seen one. Man, all these people saying that Magmar shit. They're fucking hating, man. They, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And, yeah, the run is over. That was a pretty satisfying champion battle, I will say. The planning for that was really good. Like, it was so easy, despite me being underleveled. He just got knocked over. And it's kind of weird. I will say, like, for most of the game, Magmar is actually, it's by far the worst Omega starter. But, against the champion, it's by far the best. It's so good for this one purpose. And, yeah, it was really, it's not even that good against the other Elite Four members, which is kind of weird. But, yeah, like, it gets used for this. So that, that concludes the Fire Red Omega Hardcore Plus 1 Def Equals Reset Nuzlocke. This is definitely a step above most Nuzlocke that you'd normally see on YouTube. This isn't like... Can you beat Pokemon Emerald with hardcore Nuzlocke rules? No. This is, can you beat a significantly harder version of Pokemon Fire Red with a significantly harder version of hardcore Nuzlocke rules with a very, very significantly harder one death equals reset on top of that? This is the real deal, people. And I will be doing plenty more hard and fun Nuzlocke challenges in the future, I might return to this game and try to do Hardcore Plus Plus, which is basically Hardcore Plus, but you're not allowed to use any gift mons, so we cannot get any guaranteed Snorlax, and no Static Encounters, no Scizor, no Swampert. It's still definitely doable, but that's going to make things a lot harder. Also, gift mons do make every single run pretty much the same. But yeah, definitely expect to see plenty more Hard Nuzlocke in the future, maybe Dark Rising Kaizo, Emerald Kaizo, Renegade Platinum, Blazed Glaze or whatever. But yeah, that pretty much concludes this challenge. I do recommend this, it's actually really fun and the run is very fast to do and very convenient. It's, it's a very nice game to play, I really love this game. But that pretty much concludes the video. So, that will be all. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. I'm not going to ask you, please like, comment, and subscribe, because come on, if you like my comment, you'll subscribe, I don't need to tell you that, do what you want to do, you know, but yeah, see you next time, and goodbye everyone.